he's like anybody else, anybody else who works anywhere. See him on the street, you're not going to say, oh, this guy must be a CEO of a major corporation that changed the tide of the Port of Tacoma and the City of Tacoma. You're not going to say that. Once you get to know him, you'll see why that happened. Everybody here has their expertise, and that expertise is allowed to flourish under Carl's leadership. If you don't have teamwork and you don't have people that buy into it, you're not going to get the job done. And I think that nurturing attitude that, that Carl and Jim have here, it just flows all the way down. He just brings that uh, conviction that it's going to happen, which is often the catalyst for other people reaching the same conclusion. He recognized that when he was a member of the East Side Boys Club, others were members of the other side, the North End, the South End, and the Central End. He felt that we were too weak by being individuals, and we could be stronger clubs if we became one. So he enabled us to forget our own territory and become one. And out of that was the birth of the South Sound Boys and Girls Club. He dreams big. And um, sometimes I'll get around with him and I'll say that, you know, something was about as good as it can get. And he'll always correct me and say, no, you know, there's always something better, bigger. Uh, I followed the fortunes of the uh, America's Car Museum and knew some of the forces at work. And there was a time when it was, it looked, it looked difficult, and it was difficult. And Carl found, and what, what I think is a fairly obscure, and I know is a very complicated, tax credit program. And he was able to explain it to me and some editors at the News Tribune in a way that even I could understand it. He, he knew it so well. He was uh, one of the few people, I think, in the country uh, who knew the ins and outs of this program. But he understood it, he could explain it, and in the end, it worked. Thanks to Carl. He's not content with his status quo. He's not content with accepting something substandard. He wants it to be the best that it can be. Whether it's Tacoma, uh, this museum, his business. Also that type of leadership brought about equity among the clubs. So regardless of which club you were part of, you had equal access, equal, equal leadership and instruction. It's the second largest Indian land claim settlement in the history of the country. Without Carl, it would not have happened. Uh, I remember people told me during the settlement, well, you really need to tell Carl to slow down because we're not ready yet. He said, you don't understand. Carl only has one gear. That's fast forward. The things that he is passionate about and he takes great pleasure in, it just shows. It just shows. When he gives his commitment, he means it. He gives his word, he means it. Um, and when he gives you his friendship, he means it. The more I, I know Carl and get to know him as a friend, the more things I find out that he's involved with. You know, good luck getting him to talk about that. He's not gonna, he's not gonna raise his own sales at all. Out of all the years we've known each other, all those years, Carl has probably called me 30 or 40 times on different things. Never for himself or his company. Not once in 30 years. So those are the kind of leaders as a community you, you treasure.